Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and we just finished reading of City and Butterfly by Laurel K. Hamilton. Really, really enjoyed this book. Um, we finished it up last week. Uh, we did the final set of discussion questions. If you didn't see that video, definitely check it out. This week was kind of, this past week was just a freebie week with Thanksgiving and everything like that. I hope you guys had a good holiday. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get into my final list thoughts on this book in just a moment but before I do just a reminder today we are starting Lady Boss by Jackie Collins we're going to be reading the first 26 chapters because there is 107 chapters um so quite big chapter sets but I don't think the chapters themselves are very long um but really excited to jump into this one this week uh, as always, we do our Throwback Thursdays where we cover different childhood books. We do a series Saturday. That one's still kind of being worked and tweaked, uh, so I'm not sure when the next series Saturday video will be up. So if you're not already, do subscribe and hit the bell notification so you are notified when those videos get up. Uh, and then we also do a weekly read every Wednesday along with different bonus videos like our ABC challenge videos that pop up here and there. Um, but for our weekly Wednesday, we are finishing up Wyoming Giant by John S. McCord this week. You can find my thoughts on this one in Wednesday's video. And then this Wednesday, we will be starting Different Seasons by Stephen King. My sister's birthday is the beginning of December and she absolutely loves Stephen King. And then we're also going to be reading another book that ties to her next Wednesday, and that's going to be Shattered by Dean Koontz. She doesn't actually like Dean Koontz, um, but she gifted me all the Dean Koontz books I have. So I'm trying to work my way through them, and that way I can decide what I want to keep and what I don't. And so, yeah, I picked Shattered. This one's, you know, shorter, so that's what interested me. Um, but I'll go ahead and read the synopsis for you. It says, run or die. The van was in back of them again, closer to this time. There could be no mistake. They were being followed. Run or die. But why? The question kept nagging at Alex and Colin as they left Philadelphia behind and sped towards their new home in San Francisco. Courtney would be waiting for them, ready to begin a wonderful new life with her husband, her brother. Run or die. Now someone else is driving cross country to see Courtney too. Someone whose brain is rotting inside. Someone who knows their route, their stops, even their destination. Run or die. He's got an axe. So, yeah. We'll see if I like it. Hopefully I do a lot more than I did Demon Seed because that book was something else. So, um, but yeah, I think that gets you guys all caught up. Let's go ahead and talk about my thoughts on Obsidian Butterfly. I really enjoyed this book a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, when I was very pleasantly surprised. It wasn't near as steamy as I thought it would be. Um, so I really liked that because I was expecting it to lean heavily on that. But there's a lot of depth to these characters and the story and everything like that. Before I get too much into it, I do want to give a trigger warning because it deals with a lot of dark stuff. One is kind of gory and graphic, um, so keep that in mind if you're reading it, but it also, there's a scene that has to deal with babies, there's sacrifice, there's torture, there is, um, assault and abuse of children, uh, and then it also deals, you know, with potential assault of a a, a woman um it doesn't actually go there but it does kind of talk about it and such so just be very very aware of that if you are reading this book it really didn't bother me so much like it it took me aback quite a few times like the author really went there but it didn't really bother me so much because there was a certain realness to it um I think the way she did it was I wouldn't say tasteful because it was quite graphic and gory at times but I don't know there was a certain realness to it that was one of the reasons I enjoyed it I think there was one part where Anita when one of the children is being assaulted um she turns away and she says I normally don't turn away because 
if I can't help them, I think I owe it to them to watch what's happening if I can't help them. Uh, and I really liked that line and it really resonated with me because I think it's true. I think a lot of times in the real world, we turn a blind eye. Like what was happening to him happens to children every day in the real world. And we kind of turn a blind eye like it's out of sight, out of mind. Um, especially I know for like me, like I almost feel helpless. Um, and so I don't even want to acknowledge that. And I think it's, it's true for a lot of people, but I think we owe, you know, our discomfort. We still owe it to acknowledge the suffering that these children go through. Um, and so I really like that line. And I think that's why I like that dark aspect of this book because she went there and it makes you really think about what happens in the real world too, which that's one of the things I like about fiction books is when they can make you think of things that really do happen in the real world, whether that's something that's great or something that's dark. Um, and so I really enjoyed that aspect of this book and there's a lot of depth to these characters and to the story itself. Like, so much depth, which I loved. I was actually reading the Dresden Files at the same time I was reading this one, and I needed to take a break because I just, I didn't want to read the Dresden Files. I wasn't excited. And if you've seen some of those videos where I talk about those books, there's not a lot of depth to those books. So the themes are very similar, but there's not that depth to the Dresden Files that there were in this book. And this book is the ninth in the series, and eventually we are going to be going back and reading the whole series. And it's going to be interesting to see what she did in the, in the earlier books, whether there was still that depth there as she's building this character and the story verse. Um, but I thought that was something she did particularly well in this one. And the reason why I jumped ahead to the ninth book and didn't start at the beginning was because this was the one that stood out the most in my husband's mind. So... Another thing I really, really enjoyed was she kind of takes a look at good and evil and there's a look at like this, where's that line? Because you have Edward and Bernardo and Olaf and they're human and technically in this story, they are on the good side. Like they're, they're they're the good guys in the story, but they're not, <laughs> if that makes especially Olaf. Um, and Olaf crosses a line that the other three, Anita, Bernardo, and Edward, would not cross at all. Um, and so it, it just kind of takes a look, and then, you know, of course, the monster. But they kind of refer to themselves as monsters, um, and it, it does. Like, I think we all have kind of the capacity for good and evil, um, and it kind of looks at that too and I think Anita's the goodest of them all but she still has that darkness in her you know uh and yeah I just I really liked that aspect because it was like who's the good guys and who can you really trust um and then like Edward and Anita are technically the good guys but when they're dealing with Riker and his men in that whole situation like those guys are human too but you have them on different sides but out of the two sides, Edward and Nina are the more, most dangerous. Um, and so, yeah, I really liked that, like, it wasn't very clear, you know, and it kind of makes you explore that dynamic as well. Um, and, you know, kind of reflect on, on your own darkness a little bit, too. And I know I just really liked the whole dynamic of the book and the characters um, and kind of always questioning that. And, like, Anita is... Um, she has a lot of faith. She believes in God. She's a monotheist. And then you have like the Aztec God aspect and how her faith plays a part in that. Um, and then there's Lieutenant Marks who thinks she's a witch and is kind of condemning her. Um, and I don't know. I just, I love the whole aspect of the book. I know I'm not explaining it very well, but it's so complex. Like it's hard to explain. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed how she explored, like, the darkness and the darker aspects of humanity, too. Um, it wasn't just about the supernatural monster and what it was doing, you know? 
And so I, I absolutely love this book and I love how complex it was. And she did a really great job with not only the characters, but like I said, the story and the plot line and such itself. I will say there was a certain part where the werewolves came in and she kind of didn't address that in the end. Like, it's just kind of a loose end there that she didn't tie off. And I did not like that. Um, she kind of catches you up on, like, all the different players. But on that part, she just kind of left it hanging. And I did not like that. Like, I was like, like, it was almost like there was too many, like, characters and such. And it got a little too complex. And she just kind of. When they were done with their part, they were just done and out of sight, out of mind. So um, that's the only real criticism I have of the book. Um, and it wasn't near as steamy as I thought it was going to be. Like, she definitely went there in certain aspects, but it wasn't what I was expecting. Like, I thought that was going to be a big focus. And my husband has said, like, in her later books, like, she he kind of stopped getting them because her later books like that was the focus instead of more on the story and the characters it was all about the, the steamy aspects um and so it'll be interesting you know he has so many of them and I'm eventually gonna like said work my way through them and so it will be interesting to see how she changes and if I will still enjoy like some of her later books or not but this one I mean 100% enjoy it 100% would recommend it uh, eventually, like I said, we are going to kind of go back and start at the beginning and work our way through the series, but I, I love jumping in here and I don't know if like in the beginning, if there was that complexity or not. So it's really going to be interesting to see that once I do go back, but I a hundred percent recommend this book for sure. Um, especially if you like, like supernatural stories and, and such. Um, and this one, like it had very strong... Buffy vibes, but, like, adult version, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, and I just, I loved it so much. So, definitely recommend this. Let me know if you read it, your thoughts, if you kind of like that complexity. Um, it's really kind of looking at good and evil and different people. And kind of, like, looking at, you know, loss of innocence and, and such. And how things, you know, you just get a little bit more jaded and, and lose a little bit of yourself. Um, the further you go and such. I really like that aspect as well. But I know I wasn't very articulate talking about this. I just, it, it was very complex, but I really enjoyed the depth of this book, which you, if you've been following along, you know I like a good depth to the character and to the story for sure. So let me know your thoughts if you did read it. If you haven't read it, I do encourage you to do so or start at the beginning um and, and see what you think and kind of go go your way through them this one like i said is the ninth book and then again just a reminder we are going to start lady boss this week so but yeah happy reading everyone bye